going to show you sequence exam questions. If at any point you're finding it a little bit tricky, just go and have a look at my other lessons, sequences, parts one, two and three, and then hopefully it will seem a little bit easier. So in this exam question it says the table shows the first four terms in sequences A, B and C and uh, we have to complete the table. So let's start by looking at sequence A. So the first time the term is 4, then we have 9, 14, 19, the fifth term we need to fill in. So let's start by looking at the differences between these numbers. To get from 4 to 9 I need to add 5. To get from 9 to 14 I also have to add 5 and the same thing for 14 to 19, we're adding 5. So there's a constant difference each time. We have to add 5 to the previous term in order to find the next one. So to find the fifth term, you would just add 5 to 19 and it gives you 24. So there's the fifth term. Let's go straight on to working out the nth term. So because we're adding 5 each time, the nth term starts with positive 5n. And then to find the remainder of the nth term, how do you get from this number 5 to the first term in your sequence 4? Well, you have to subtract 1. Okay, so there's the nth term for sequence A. For sequence B, this time, if I look at the differences between these numbers, they're different. To start with, to get from 3 to 10, I'm adding 7. Then to get from 10 to 29, I'm adding 19. And then to get from 29 to 66, I have to add 37. So it's not the same difference each time. So I can't work out the nth term as easily or even the fifth term as easily. If I check the difference between the differences, well here the difference is 12 and then the difference is 18. So even the second lot of differences they're different. So it's not a quadratic sequence either. Okay, so if it's not um, like the first sequence A and it's not a quadratic, um, the ones that are left over could be something cubic, okay, or it could be a number to the power of n, something like that. So let's look a bit more closely at these numbers. Is it a geometric sequence? Am I multiplying three by the same number to get to 10 as I am to get to 29. Doesn't look like I'm multiplying anything by 3 to get to 10. So it's not a geometric sequence. So we can also rule out um, a number to the power of n, that kind of nth term. So let's look at a cubic sequence. Well, 1 cubed, 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. 2 cubed is 8 and 3 cubed is 27. Okay, so I'm just writing down the cube numbers. To start with. If I compare these cube numbers to the numbers in sequence B, I can see to get from the cubic numbers to sequence B, I have to add 2. 1 plus 2 is 3, 8 plus 2 is 10, 27 plus 29, um, 27 plus 2 is 29. So because we're adding 2 to this sequence to get to sequence B, the nth term should be n cubed plus 2. Okay, and then we can use this to work out the fifth term. Okay, so we're just changing n to 5 in our nth term in order to work out the fifth term. So 5 cubed is 5 times 5 times 5, which is 125. And if I add 2, I get 127. Okay, so by process of elimination, we worked out this was a cubic sequence. And we could find it relatively quickly just by comparing it to the cube numbers. If we look at sequence C, well, these are square numbers, but this is not 3 squared, so it's not n squared, then the term. If we look more closely, we're multiplying by the same number each time in this sequence. We're always multiplying the previous term by 4 in order to find the next term. So this is a geometric sequence. So... To find the next one, let's just fill that in first. 64 multiplied by 4, well, that gives me 256, okay? And now let's see if we can work out the nth term. So because I'm multiplying by 4 each time, well, this is the common ratio, okay? So r is equal to 4. The first term in this sequence is 1, 
so a1 is equal to 1. And then you can substitute these values into the formula for a geometric sequence. So to work out the nth term, so an, you're multiplying the first term a1 by the common ratio raised to the power of n minus 1. Okay, so a1, the first term is just 1 in this sequence. The common ratio is 4. And if I raise it to the power of n minus 1, 1 multiplied by this, well, it just stays the same. So the nth term is 4 to the power of n minus 1. If you're not familiar with this, uh, the formula of a geometric sequence, I do have a lesson on this. I think it's sequences part 3, so you can have a look at that on my channel. Okay, so in this exam question, we've been given another table with sequence A here, sequence B and sequence C. We have to complete the table for the three sequences. So let's start by seeing if we can fill in the fifth term to sequence A. So let's look more closely at these numbers here. To get from 13 to 9, I have to subtract 4. To get from 9 to 5, I also have to subtract 4. And to get from 5 to 1, I'm subtracting 4 again. So every time you have to subtract 4 in order to find the next term. So if I do 1 take away 4, it gives me the fifth term, which is negative 3. So since we're subtracting 4 each time, the nth term should start with negative 4n. Then to find the remainder of the nth term, how do you get from negative 4 all the way to the first term, 13? Well, you have to add 17. Okay, so there's the nth term for sequence A. Now, if we look at sequence B, the difference is they're not constant. To get from 0 to 7, we're adding 7. To get from 7 to 26, we're adding 19. And then to get from 26 to 63, we're adding 37. And if I check the differences of the differences, these are different as well. To get from 7 to 19, I have to add 12. To get from 19 to 37, I have to add 18. So it's not like the first method and it's not a quadratic sequence either. I'm not multiplying 0 by a number to get to 7. So it's looking like it could be a cubic sequence again. So I'm going to write down those cube numbers again. So 1 cubed is 1, 2 cubed is 8, and 3 cubed is 27. And I'm going to compare these with the numbers in sequence B. So I can see quite quickly that to get from the cubic numbers to sequence B, I have to subtract 1. 1 take away 1 gives me 0. 8 take away 1 gives me 7. 27 take away 1 gives me 26. So I'm subtracting 1 from the cubic numbers to find the numbers in sequence B. So the nth term should be n cubed minus 1. I can then use this nth term to work out the fifth term. So that means I have to change n to the number 5. So if I work out 5 cubed minus 1, remember 5 cubed is 125, and if I take away 1, I'm left with 124. So there's the fifth term. Now, sequence C, it looks difficult, but it really isn't, okay? Just treat the numerators as one sequence of numbers and the denominators as another sequence. You can probably see already the numerator just increases by 1 each time. 7 plus 1 is 8, 8 plus 1 is 9, 9 plus 1 is 10, and so the next numerator should be 11. And because you're adding 1 each time, the nth term for the numerator should start with 1n. Okay, you can write 1n or just n is probably better. And then how do you get from the number 1 to the first number in your sequence, 7? Well, you have to add 6. Okay, so 1 plus 6 gives you 7. So the nth term for the numerator is n plus 6. Now let's look at the denominators. Well, to get from 8 to 16, I'm timesing by 2. To get from 16 to 32, I'm timesing by 2. So each time I'm timesing the denominator by 2 in order to find the next one. So 64 multiplied by 2 gives me 128. So we found the fifth term already. Let's see if we can find the nth term for the denominator. So because we're multiplying by the same number each time, it's another geometric sequence. This number 2, positive 2, is the common ratio. 
and the first term, a1, in our sequence is 8. Then if I substitute this into the formula, a n, so the nth term, it's equal to the first term in your sequence, a1, multiplied by the common ratio raised to the power of n minus 1. So a1 is 8, the common ratio is 2, and we can simplify this, we can write this um, in a nicer format. 8 is the same as 2 cubed. Okay, you can rewrite this as 2 to the power of something. And then you can use the rules of indices to add the powers here and here. So the base number is the same, so that's why the rule works. So if I add 3 and n minus 1, I'm left with n plus 2. So that is the nth term for the denominator. 2 to the power of n plus 2. Okay, so there's the whole nth term for this sequence of numbers. Now, let's look at part B. It says one term in sequence C is PQ. Write down the next term in sequence C in terms of P and Q. Well, if we consider the numerator to start with, remember the numerator in each um, term, it increases by one each time. So to get from seven to eight, you add one. To get from eight, so 9, you add 1. You have to add 1 to the numerator in order to find the next numerator. So that's the numerator done already. Now let's consider, consider the denominator. Remember, this time you're multiplying the denominator by the number 2 to find the next denominator. So because you're multiplying by 2 each time, you would have to multiply Q by 2 in order to find the next one. So that's the answer. Okay, the next term in sequence C, in terms of P and Q, is P plus 1 over 2Q.